live from the mist and shrouded mountaintop fortress that is X and Y Communications Headquarters. You're listening to the world famous Mountaintop Podcast. And now, here's your host, Scott McKay. Hey, hey, out there. Welcome again to yet another episode of the world famous Mountaintop Podcast. My name is Scott McKay at Scott McKay on both Clubhouse and Twitter. Real Scott McKay on Instagram. You can find us on YouTube by searching my name, S-C-O-T-M-C-K-A-Y. The URL, as always, is mountaintoppodcast.com. And if you haven't joined our Facebook group yet, it is called the Mountain Top Summit, and it is on Facebook and there for guys who want to be the best man possible and find the greatest woman possible and get her into their lives. So we're having a lot of fun up there. It isn't your typical men's group where everybody's kind of complaining about everything and not acting very masculine. Yeah, we're very different. So come join us at the Mountaintop Summit. With me today is a new friend of mine. Her name is Kimberly Holmes, and she is with It Starts With Attraction. That's the name of her company. She's a relationship expert who hails from Franklin, Tennessee. And boy, do we have a great topic for you today. So without anything further, Kimberly, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Scott. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, you know what? Uh, This is a topic that I'm not sure we've ever really covered. And I'm just going to throw it out on the table. The true nature of attraction. Mm -hmm. Now, Kimberly, you know, we talk about attraction all the time in this business, this relationship dating business, as it were. And we kind of treat it as if everybody knows what we're talking about. And maybe viscerally, we know when we're feeling it. Uh, mm-hmm. David D'Angelo once said famously, attraction is not a choice. You can't talk somebody into being attracted to you. But, you know, that kind of leaves us with this burning question that I think has gone unanswered perhaps forever, which is what is attraction? How do you even define it? Well, attraction is more than a feeling for sure. Although typically that is what we go on when we say that we're feeling attracted to someone, we have chemistry, all of those things that we say. But when we actually look at the process of how people fall in love, it really is a process. And if you follow this process, then you can fall in love with someone. If you stop following the process, then you can actually fall out of love with someone. But the process begins with attraction. There's actually four stages of falling in love. Maybe we can talk about all of those on a later podcast, but the, the beginnings of the process of falling in love starts with attraction. Now, attraction is more than just physical attraction. It's more than just that feeling that you initially feel. There's actually four areas of attraction. And we see this confirmed when we look at the research about attraction as well. There's the physical area of attraction, intellectual, emotional attraction, and spiritual attraction. All of those, if you put that acronym together, physical, intellectual, emotional, spiritual, we call it the pies of attraction. It's not as delicious as blueberry or chocolate, but it can get you some better long-term results than pies that you may eat just day in and day out. But when we talk about true attraction, what really is not just going to attract you to someone momentarily, not just the glance of the attractive woman that your listeners see across the room at the bar or at work or wherever they might be, the grocery store, the gym. It's not just that, that yes, that is a form of attraction. That's that physical attraction of that person looks pleasing to me. There are things about her that attract me to her, which we can talk about. We can talk about the things that men are more attracted to in women or the things more importantly to your audience that women are more attracted to in men when they're looking for them. But the physical attraction part of it is not what's going to keep a relationship going. It's these other parts, this intellectual attraction, which goes deeper than physical. Physical is, I like the way you look, but intellectual is, I like the conversations we have. You're a person that I can talk to. Emotional attraction goes even deeper and it says, I like the way I feel when I'm around you. Spiritual attraction is is not just about faith or beliefs, but it's, I like who you are as a person. At your core, the things that you stand for, I'm attracted to that. And we can talk about all of those more in depth if you would like. But when we're talking about the true nature of attraction, it involves all four of those things. I got to tell you, I'm incredibly disappointed in myself. (laughs) Why is that? Well, see, I'm on this four hour fasting window right now. Okay. And so I don't eat I'm, I haven't eaten today, okay? As mm-hmm. I say where I come from, I ain't at yet <laughs> <laughs> from Baltimore, you know. <laughs> Have you at yet? I ain't at yet, honey. All right. So, um, Sounds a lot like Tennessee. 
<laughs> right. Well, I mean, it's probably there's probably a kindred spirit there for sure. There for is, sure. There yeah. There's John Waters movies, and then there's you know out in the holler. And if you've ever seen a John Waters movie, they're strangely similar. Okay, so when you started talking about the pies of attraction, mm-hmm. I should have had a very visceral, sexual Beavis and Butthead like image in my head. You know, <laughs> that's what should have happened, right? And the reason why I'm so disappointed in myself is I started thinking about pies. Like, oh, man, like Boston cream pie because I'm hungry. So actual pies. Yeah, I see. And you know, you for a split second there, I kind of wandered off into daydream land a little bit while you were talking, saying, you know, here's a shower thought. A younger man would have immediately thought about a pie being a woman's vaginal area, you know. Yeah. But now that I'm older and perhaps a little bit more grizzled veteran, you know, I had a more, well, pure thought. But you know what? I think sometime after nine o'clock tonight when I've had dinner, I would go right back into Beavis and Butthead mode. But <laughs> clearly you're thinking about something different, and that's what we want to focus on. And when I think of attraction, the first thing that comes to mind is talking about how attractive people are. Okay. Mm-hmm. And see, typically, I firmly believe when someone says, oh, they're an attractive person, they really are looking at the looks first. But I couldn't agree with you more about this whole pies thing. I can't think of a fifth letter to put in the acronym. So, you know, you must be right on target here. Uh, Physical. Yeah. I mean, for a guy, she has to look good. And that's also important to women. Although I would say for women, it's more about a guy who does the best with what he's got instead of being a slob. The intellectual, the sapiosexual part of that question, if you will, I think is a little more important to some people than others. You know, some people really, that is the cornerstone of how they feel sexual attraction is this person just, you know, stimulates my mind as well as my loins, <laughs> you know, like mm-hmm. Eddie Murphy said in coming to America. And then, you know, you talk about emotional and that's when you really start connecting with someone and you feel like, oh my goodness, this person's one of me. We're on the same team and and we get each other. And that takes the intellectual piece, that takes the physical piece and, and just really illuminates it. It like gives it an exponential boost. And then you have that spiritual part where, hey, you know, this person believes the way I do. And I just feel like, a, you know, here's that phrase again, this kindred spirit with this person. And they really are all very interrelated, aren't they? They are very interrelated. But they also move. If you think about the way people date, this makes sense as to how we experience relationships unfolding. So typically we see someone first and then we start talking to them. And that's how we get to know more about their mind and and hobbies that you have in common and all of those things. And then the more time you spend together and start going on dates, learn more about each other, learn about each other's past, all of those things, how how the other person will treat you, how you treat the other person, that's going to unveil that emotional attraction. And then over time, you learn the real core of who a person is, not by just what they say they believe or, or what they say is important to them, but you see it in action and whether or not those two things correlate. And so in all of these areas of attraction, someone can either be positive in them, where if you think of it kind of like a, like a magnet, there's that positive in the negative end, then in the pies, someone could be physically magnetized to you, or you can be physically magnetized to them, but they could also be repulsive on that other end. You And you can even get this with the same person. If you are with someone long enough, you may be at first very positively physically attracted to them. But over time, if they don't take care of themselves, um, I'll talk to about a stat in a minute about when it comes to men. But when men stop taking care of themselves, then it can start repulsing the woman away. The same is true gender opposite as well, but it happens in every area of the pies. Intellectually, if someone stops growing or having hobbies or you stop being able to have things in common that you can talk about, then not only does that just not attract someone to you, it could actually repulse someone away from you. Emotionally, if you stop doing the things that make other people feel good and unfortunately, if you start doing things that make them feel bad, 
about themselves, make them feel bad when they're around you, they don't like the way that they feel, then it can repulse someone. If you no longer are the person that you used to be, if you start acting against the beliefs and values that you say that you had, it can repulse the other person away from you. So all of these have a positive and a negative to them. And when we're looking at building a long-term relationship, you said at the beginning of this, it's about finding that right woman and staying with them for, for life or however you worded it, then we, ha- we have to look beyond the how we feel right now. And we have to look at what is going to make me the most attractive I can be in a long-term relationship. And then, and that's where you start, number one. And then after that is, and then what do I look for in a mate that is most attractive, that will keep me attracted for a long-term relationship? Both of them are important, but it has to start with me as an individual. It has to start with you as an individual first. Now, see, as you're talking about all these repulsive pies, I think I just successfully added to your acronym, kind of in an adjunct way. How about cow pies? That's pretty repulsive. Pretty Much repulsive. better than strawberry rhubarb or something like a key lime. Those are delicious. A repulsive pie would be a cow pie because you're callous, offensive, and weak. Mm. You mm-hmm. see what I did there? I do. You yeah. made an acronym. <laughs> That's pretty repulsive. If you're callous, offensive, and weak, then, you know, the pies thing wouldn't be so delicious anymore. That's right. right? Yeah. Now, I like what you're saying about this really holistic view of attraction because attraction to me rhymes with magnetism. So yeah, I can like how you look, but unless those other pieces of the pie, those other three slices aren't making up my pie graph here, then I'm going to be kind of left hungry Mm -hmm. after the first slice is eaten, okay? Wanting for something different. And it reminds me of a time where I stood in front of a conference of men and I just took an informal poll and I said, hey, how many of you guys have ever wanted to go out with this woman who was just so hot? She was just so beautiful, sexy to you that you wanted to go out with her. And finally, you go out on a date with her and 40 minutes later, you can't get out of there fast enough. Mm-hmm. Every hand in the room shot up Yeah, to laughs. Like they knew exactly what I was talking about. Yeah. Uh, for every beautiful woman out there is a man who's sick of her, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, especially if she's only going on her looks and she's not doing the things to grow in these other areas. So just because someone is physically attractive and that is how God blessed them, like there's not much to an extent, there's not much I can do to change how I look. I can make sure that I am fit, that I'm eating well. I can I can do a lot of things like that, but I can't make myself taller unless I go through surgery. I can't make dramatic changes to my body. And you know, at the end of the day, we're kind of given the hand that we're dealt. And so it's not as much as being the most beautiful woman. I'll speak for women. It's not as much about being the most beautiful woman and having to compete with supermodels, but it's about how can I make sure that I take care of myself, my physical body as I am, but then also focus on developing that I'm an intellectually attractive person that I'm the kind of person that, I mean, I'm, I'm married, but I still have to ask this question that I'm the kind of woman. My husband still wants to have a conversation with that. He still wants to come home to me. And we have things in common that we're not just growing apart and it's all about the kids and he does his thing and I do mine, but that we are still connecting, having conversations and that he's still growing and being smarter. I'm still growing and being smarter because that's attractive. How can we continue? How do I continue on a daily basis to make sure I am showing my husband that I not just love him, but how am I evoking emotions that he enjoys feeling? Am I doing that by show, you know, giving him a kiss when he comes home from work? Am I doing it by uh, the way that I treat him, the way that I talk to him, the way that I help him with things that he has going on around the house? For men, it could be the opposite. What? So a good question for the male listeners to answer here is for the ones that are in relationships, a good question for them to ask is what is it that I do that evokes positive emotions in my girlfriend or my wife's life? Do they like the way they feel when they're around me? Do I pay attention to them? Do I help them out with the chores around the household? I know that's not popular, but it's needed. 
Do I um, make sure that when we have sex that I am meeting their needs, that I'm not just always focusing on me and getting things done, but that I'm allowing that time for foreplay, that I'm that I'm listening to her, that I'm sending her flowers if that's what she likes. So those things matter in long-term relationships. Otherwise, it's easy to find a pretty person to have a one night stand with, but it's not going to fill that hole in your heart. It's not going to make you feel any better. It's not the healthiest thing to do as an individual. I mean, the healthiest thing for individuals, according to research, is you get into a long-term committed relationship with someone who you know has your back. It improves mental health. It improves uh, so many things, socioeconomic status. There's so many positive benefits of being in a long-term committed relationship, but it all is going to go back to that attraction piece. Am I attracted to them? And are they attracted to me? And even when you're married, I've been married 10 years. This is still something I consciously make a decision to work on every single day, not just for my husband, but because I want to be the most attractive I can be. Man, there's a lot to talk about there. The first thing that comes to mind is essentially what you're talking about is our main tagline around here, which is deserving what you want. You got to be one half of a great relationship before you can expect to go out and find the other half. And that starts with caring about yourself and your own attractiveness in all these areas you're talking about. And I also couldn't help but think that, uh, you know, the first thing that came to mind was pies with two S's, but hey, why don't we just put that other S in the front and make it spies? right? Mm. Sexual compatibility. Hey, you just named it. Claim it. Is this person and I having a good, solid sexual relationship together? And, you know, you might call that emotional or spiritual, but I don't know. I might make it its own category. You know, why not? But um, that's very important. And the other thing that comes to mind from what you were talking about, and it's something that we talk about a lot around here, and that's character. Character being good character, of course. You can have no character or bad character as well. But when I talk about character, you know, in case it's not completely obvious, I'm talking about good character. And that means you mean well. Your yes is yes. You do the right thing even when nobody else is looking, and you certainly want to do right by your significant other. This is the attractive feature of a long-term relationship that actually gets stronger over time because, you know, that keeps us attracted you know, among other things. I mean, you obviously want to look the best you can and, you know, keep the engaging conversations going, all those wonderful things you've talked about. I mean, attraction should be forever, even if physical attraction wanes over time. And that said, I find that there's this component of what I call at large God's dirty little trick that kicks in where we as guys tend to find women closer to our own age, more attractive as we get to be that age. <laughs> and that's a good thing. My wife is, uh, I'm not even going to say the number this year, and uh, she's not looking forward to this big milestone birthday of hers, but she is absolutely ever bit as gorgeous to me, even physically, as the day I met her 15 years ago. But I love what you're saying, because what you're doing is you're adding this element of, let's just spell it out, depth to attraction. And I think a lot of people wander around thinking of attraction in very shallow terms. And oh, the things we're ripping ourselves off from enjoying in life by doing that, right? We cheat ourselves with such a shallow view of attraction, don't we? I believe that we do, absolutely. And it what it looks like in society is there's a lot of try this, lose all this weight now, or get this macho bod with all the muscles and all the things. And there's a lot of focus. There really is a lot of focus on that physical aspect. And in some aspects, there's a lot of focus only on the sexual aspect. And just to mention or touch on what you went back to in regards to the sexual component, a sexual attraction towards someone can be cultivated over time. So even if a couple has their first sexual encounter and it's not what they hoped it would be, it's really more. So it does have some to do with all the intricacies of, of the actual act of sex. But really what makes great sex has more to do with the emotional state of the relationship. So one way that you could think about it is that whatever happens inside the bedroom affects what happens outside the bedroom. And whatever happens outside the bedroom affects what happens inside the bedroom. It's all connected. You can't disconnect that emotional attraction from how you feel when you have sex with someone. Because if you don't like the way you feel already, then that sexual encounter is not going to be 
satisfying. Well, plus it also takes practice to get better together and learn each other's sexual needs and likes Mm -hmm. and dislikes and get vulnerable enough in the best way possible to admit what your fantasies are to each other. And what you're doing here is enumerating why in no uncertain terms. I just think one night stands shouldn't be celebrated so much. I mean, here's the way I look at that. Okay. If I want to have sex with a person once, I think I would like to go back and have sex with them again. I don't want to test drive this Lamborghini. I want to park it in my garage. (laughs) You know what I mean? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, this whole idea of sexual compatibility, I do believe there are people who aren't going to be sexually compatible. And some of that may be as baseline as pheromones, you know. But ultimately, I agree with you. Good sex is a learned skill. And it's something that comes from relating and becoming more intimate together. Mm -hmm. Intimate sex is better sex. I mean, sometimes people just want to get their rocks off. I totally get it. But Notwithstanding using each other as a mere masturbation tool, that intimacy that comes with sex does make sex better in the relationship sense. It does. And when it goes back to us thinking about how do we become the most attractive we can be, then one great way to do that is by focusing on how to create more of those feelings that your significant other enjoys feeling in their life. And that will help lead to better sex. Yeah. Selfishness is never attractive. No. Inside or outside the bedroom, right? Also no. being clueless or anything like that. <laughs> you know, maybe that would be a good segue here, Kimberly. What are some attractive traits? Do you mm. think there are universally attractive traits or that everybody has kind of a subjective view of this? I mean, for example, you mentioned supermodels earlier. I think the vast majority of guys don't really want a supermodel. I mean, I'm not personally even sexually attracted to the supermodel body type, mm. you know? Right. So, I mean, uh, what are some universally attractive traits and what are some traits that, on the other hand, may be a lot more subjective than the media tells us they are? I'll let you riff on one side of the coin or the other. Dealer's choice. Okay. When we look at what the research shows in terms of attraction, then men being attracted to women, what men find attractive in women is not the supermodel body. So what you said aligns right, right in line with what research says. Actually, what men find most attractive is a waist to hip ratio of 70%, meaning the golden that, ratio, right? that golden ratio. I'm sure, I'm sure you're aware of it, but here's, what's interesting about it. That is actually the ideal hip to waist or waist to hip ratio for childbearing for women. Indeed, did you know that? Yeah, I did. Actually, a lot of the traits that we find attractive in each other are very closely tied to fertility. They, yes, they very much are. So men- See God's dirty little trick. (laughs) That's right. So men are going to find those things more attractive when it comes to physical in a woman, like the bright eyes, the, the pretty hair, because it shows that she's healthy. That's what, that's what you're really looking for. For women towards men, what women are looking for is the broad shoulders because it, it all goes back to the fertility and to the procreation. Is this a man that could protect my future children and protect our family? So it's broad shoulders. It's um, a height. There is a height aspect to it. But women are also looking, interestingly, what do you think? Let's see if you know the research. What, would, what do you think women would say is the most attractive part of a man's body? Eyes. But. Oh, well, I mean, are you talking sexually or are you talking about what the safe answer is? No. <laughs> well, I think it's safer for women to say that about a man than it might be for a man to say it about a woman. <laughs> well, I mean, this is like one of those conversations where there's a socially acceptable answer right. and then there's the real answer, like the whole penis size question. I mean, let's get real. Um, right. But yeah. <laughs> see what I did there? But, but. Um, here's the interesting thing. In terms of women getting turned on by a man's body part, I have heard that his ass is what's most important. But if you don't mind me getting a little bit visceral here, I think men are far more sexually turned on by women's asses in the bedroom than women are and vice versa. Because I, well, let's be real here. I'm not very tall, so I don't have the height thing going. There are other things I don't have going for me, but I've always had a really nice ass because I've ridden bicycles my whole life and I played soccer. So legs and ass, I've always had down. And I've had women grab my ass in public and stuff like that, okay? Spank me and all these other things that I would be, you know, sold down the river (laughs) for sexual harassment if I did (laughs) as a man to a woman, right? Can't do that. 
But in the bedroom, I find myself with my hands on women's naked butts and burying my face in their crack and just reveling in female ass a lot more than goes on vice versa. I mean, I don't have a history of getting reports from men that women are worshiping their naked ass in the bedroom. It's just really weird like that. So women say this, and then in the real world, it's not really what plays out according to most of the reports from any man I've ever talked about in terms of what women are really excited about when it gets down and dirty behind closed doors. I've always found that extremely interesting. Well, I don't know about that part of it necessarily. I I think for women, especially the way that the research was done, is – you just look at it, right? So they're, they've, yes. they're given different silhouettes and different things to choose from. And that is what they considered most attractive. But to go back to, let's talk about something other than physical, because physical, there's part, like we said earlier, there's things you can change, there's things you can't. But when, let's look about attraction further than that. Well, hold on just a second before you go there. Okay. I don't want to orphan these guys on why women find butts attractive. Because where I thought you were going to head with this is it isn't about getting their hands on it and burying their face in it at all. It's more about what a man's butt says about his ability to be fertile or to protect me or something. Well, yeah, it's muscular muscular definition. So it's all about when we look at any of those, I mean, the reason that women are attracted to the broad shoulders and the height is, well, not necessarily the height as much, but those broad shoulders is- you don't have to apologize for me. I get it. (laughs) Just go ahead. <laughs> but it's that. Like, is this man muscular? And interestingly for men, you can tell, like, if they deadlift, if they lift a lot of things, then they have a very well-defined butt. So it's it's just another one of those things that women look at. And I will say, according to the research, even though it was the number one answer, it's still only 30% of women. So it's not the majority. It's just that the most women said that. Other things were or some of those others, but you're right. There are things that women don't necessarily care about as much as the physical features, because while women do want a man who is going to protect them and to, and who they feel will is a dominant figure, they do not want to be dominated. So women definitely care about how they feel emotionally in a relationship. So a man who honestly, a man who listens without trying to fix, a man who shows compassion, a man who is not selfish, a lot of the things that we've talked about, who shows respect towards his wife, as well as wanting respect for his wife or from his wife, all of those things matter in having a long-term, emotionally attractive relationship. See, now there's that dominant word. Men are told they need to be dominant. In today's world, especially because of a lot of media driven narratives, that word sounds really rapey and abusive. Well, that's why it's different than dominating. There's a difference between being a dominant person and being a dominating person. There you go. Like being in control versus being a controlling jerk. Absolutely. So a man should have a plan. He should be confident. He should know how to provide and protect and preside, but he has the best interest of his wife or his girlfriend and his future family or current family in mind all the time. And he can make good decisions and be a listener and do this all with a sense of humor and a smile on his face. He doesn't have to be a real jerk about it. Absolutely. And you know, there's even differences in male personalities. So I'm not as quick to ascribe to the men are this way and women are this way. I believe more of it has to do with personality temperaments. And one of my favorite ones is the DISC model of personalities. Are you familiar with that one? I am in a cursory manner, but go ahead. Yeah. The D stands for dominant in that personality style. And these are the people who are quick to make decisions. They can come across as a little cold and distant, but they are really quick processors. The I in DISC stands for influential. These people are very warm and friendly and very fast processors. They typically come across as the extroverts, the outgoing ones, the spontaneous people who just love to have fun. The S stands for steady. So these people are going to be warm and friendly, but they're also slower processors. So they are, 
I would describe him like my mom, but you don't know my mom, but it is very much the person who is, please come in, have a seat, drink sweet tea, and let's just talk for a while. That's everybody's mom in Franklin, Tennessee. Come on. (laughs) It has to be. It has to be. So the C does not stand for clueless or classless, I'm sure. No, it doesn't. It stands for cautious. And that person is cool and distant, but they're also a slow processor. So it takes them a little more time to make decisions. Now, here's why all this matters in the conversation that we're having. So there are men who are the S's, the steady people who take a long time to process, and they're, but they're very warm and friendly. They can come across as weak, but they are not weak. They just take time to think about things, make decisions, and have a plan. They also tend to be very conflict averse. So if they are married or in a relationship with a woman who is opposite personality, so a personality more like mine, I'm a D on that disc scale, so I'm very dominant, but I'm a woman. I think I'm a D minus. You are definitely a D. I don't know if <laughs> I'm borderlining an F. <laughs> <laughs> I might not pass this course. <laughs> It's not, everyone's just different. None of them are bad. They're all just different. But when you have a relationship where the wife or the girl, the woman is more of that dominant personality who wants the decisions quicker, who's going to be more vocal about what she wants, is more likely to approach conflict with a man who is conflict avoidant and wants to take more time. It can appear that he doesn't have a backbone, but what women want is a man who has a backbone. Now I'm not going to get into the whole like feminist movement thing because I'm just not. I still love a man who opens a door for me. I still love a man who says, yes, ma'am, to me. I love all those things. I don't need them. I appreciate them. But I don't feel like that is an attack on me as a woman. So having a man who can stand up to me, I may not like it in the moment, but my husband needs to do it because otherwise I would run all over him. And he wouldn't have any respect for him. I, exactly. So I need him to stand. And he does. He definitely does. <laughs> I will say you that. know, so many women don't understand that about their feminine nature. Mm. You know, what we want to do if we're good men of character is free you up to be your true, authentic feminine self. And that femininity is what makes the world go around. All that fun and joy and comfort and all the things we live for on weekends, as I like to say around here. And when women try to hijack the male's role, then you have two people trying to provide and protect for each other, and there's nothing fun going on. And then the guy feels emasculated, and the woman doesn't feel any respect for the guy. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, in a truly, I would say, healthy relationship, there was no threat. The guy's not trying to like take her down by being dominant or controlling. And indeed, you know, men and women, this is not gender-specific, can have a history of being hurt and attracting the wrong person repeatedly into a relationship so that they can start perhaps believing all people of the other gender are like this and they're out to get me, or this is going to be a potentially bad situation unless I head it off at the pass and keep this jerk from controlling me, et cetera, et cetera. When the reality is in a healthy ecosystem, which a relationship should be right. The man wants to bring out that feminine nature in the woman And the woman wants to bestow upon that man all those feminine gifts. And when we do it right, and this is what all the IJ guys don't have figured out, by the way. IJ to me is an idiot jerk in my vernacular. What the idiot jerk guys haven't figured out is the more they're trying to dominate and abuse a woman, the less they're going to get to enjoy from that woman. I mean, they're literally chasing away something that they should be inviting to come towards them in the terms of that feminine energy. So this is, to me, a divinely inspired design of masculine feminine polarity. This is why men and women are in partnership with each other. And as soon as it stops looking like a partnership, that's when the wheels fall off. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a mutual benevolence here and there's a mutual recognition of the value of one's masculine or respectively feminine contribution to that relationship. And, Virtually every happy couple I've ever met long term understands this, at least implicitly, you know? Yes. There there are a lot of things that I don't believe has to be gender specific, but then there are definitely aspects of the male female ways that we come in and show up in our relationships that that do matter. I mean, women do want to feel protected. They just do. It is part of how we are designed. It is part of how we are made. Men want to protect. 
it is part of how they are designed and how they are made. Now, see, a part of that that men don't understand is that doesn't necessarily mean you're a gorilla beating up thugs. No. It means you're not making her feel stupid or belittling her or calling her names. You're protecting her emotions. You're Mm -hmm. protecting every slice of your pies here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's something that more relationally mature people start to understand. To me, that's an earmark of being relationship ready is that acknowledgement and indeed deep understanding of how all these pieces fit together and how it is a dance. And listen, I couldn't agree with you more. You have no way of knowing what we talked about on this show, especially deeper into a lot of previous episodes. But this whole idea of sexual dynamics and the masculine feminine dance, it does not cover all of those things that are not gender specific. And those aspects are legion. I mean, a woman can go out and earn six figures and be a hard driver and, you know, enjoy some masculine pastimes and watch masculine TV shows. And the guy can be a stay at home dad, but, the elements that keep us, and here's that word again, attracted, come down to those primal elements. Mm-hmm. That's that's where the rubber meets the road there. Yeah. Great conversation. And what I want to do now, Kimberly Holmes, is send these guys to your website, which is actually, it starts with attraction.com. But if you don't want to do quite that much typing or, you know, the order of words slips your memory by the time you're back in front of your computer, uh, go ahead and just remember mountaintoppodcast.com front slash Holmes. Like, what's up, Holmes? H-O-L-M-E-S. All right. And when you get there, you're going to find that relationship expert, Kimberly Holmes, has a great program called Your Best Self. Give us the elevator pitch version of what's in that program, Kimberly. Your best self is 30 days to becoming the most attractive you can be. The pies that I've spoken about today, I break that down into one of those elements each week. And then for those seven days, you're going to be learning about the best research-based things that you can begin implementing in order to be the most attractive you can be physically, intellectually, emotionally, and spiritually. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Go to mountaintoppodcast.com front slash homes, H-O-L-M-E-S, and get you some. Kimberly Holmes from It Starts With Attraction in Franklin, Tennessee. Thank you so much for joining us today. This has been a fun, entertaining, and enlightening conversation. Thank you for that. Thank you so much, Scott. And gentlemen, I also invite you to go once and for all to mountaintoppodcast.com where you can enjoy all the benefits that our sponsors are just dying to bestow upon you, namely Origin in Maine, the greatest jeans you have ever worn Excellent, excellent boots, man. I have those bison boots and I wear them every opportunity I can get. And it isn't often when dudes compliment other dudes' boots or shoes or jeans. You know, that's probably a sexual attraction trait right there. You know, women look at men's shoes. (laughs) I'll tell you what, as far as boots go, if women aren't noticing these boots, they won't notice any boots. But I actually get compliments from other dudes on my shoes, which is kind of weird, but it happens probably twice a week. Great, great shoes. They wear fantastically handmade. I mean, this is, this is a case of, you know, when people say they don't make them like they used to. Yeah. These guys do make them like they used to. They make them the right way. And they're made in America from American components, American leather and uh, great stuff. Go to origin in Maine by clicking on the link at mountaintoppodcast.com and use the code Mountain 10 to take an additional 10% off your order. You can do the same when you go visit my main man, Lucas Rui at Hero Soap. Hero Soap is made of all natural ingredients, nothing that's going to feminize you and kind of mess with your hormones and everything that's going on inside your body, guys. It's all natural and it smells great. It's going to keep you clean. If you do not have their body wash, this is not your younger selves Axe body wash. It's nothing nasty like that. This is the real deal for real sophisticated guys who want to be as clean as they can possibly be. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you're not taking a shower with your significant other without this body wash, boy, are you missing out on one of the great joys of this life. It's all there for you at Hero Soap. You can click on the link at mountaintoppodcast.com. Take 10% off by using the code mountain10. And while you're there, 
hey, I'm opening up my calendar more than ever to you guys who want to talk to me free for 25 minutes about where you are right now, where you want to be, and how to get the right woman in your life. Make sure that's a woman you're attracted to and who's attracted to you on this holistic level that we've been talking about here on this very episode. You can sign up and get on my calendar right there, right on the spot when you go to mountaintoppodcast.com and click on the upper right-hand corner where there's a little red button that signifies your ability to get on my calendar and talk to me for free. It's all there for you at mountaintoppodcast.com as always. And until I talk to you again next time, this is Scott McKay from X and Y Communications in San Antonio, Texas. Be good out there. The Mountaintop Podcast is produced by X and Y Communications. All rights reserved worldwide. Be sure to visit www.mountaintoppodcast.com for show notes. And while you're there, sign up for the free X and Y Communications newsletter for men. This is Ed Roy Odom speaking for the Mountaintop Podcast.